oh my god, they're all amazing artists and they'll think I'm shit, so they don't want to be friends with me anyway. I could not bear sitting in class throughout the three hours knowing that I it was just very uncomfortable to know that there was just this random man living in your suite who didn't even go to this school. Hello bitches, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to finally be doing the long-awaited why I hated my first year at CalArts video because that was the top voted video topic for my recent poll that I asked you all what video should I do next. And just to be clear, I wouldn't say I hated my first year at CalArts, I would just say it was not my best year at CalArts, but I feel like things usually start off a bit rocky before they get better because I did end my time at CalArts on a really good note. However, I still want to stay realistic about how it all started because I did make a previous video about my experience at CalArts, but I just felt like, you know, I wanted to be more on the safe side just because this was still my first time really making videos on YouTube with my face out there in the open public space. So yeah, but now I feel like I have a more balanced viewpoint about my time at CalArts and really why I didn't enjoy my first year there. And a part of it is usually just due to my personal inner works that I had to work on back then as a young girl slash 18 year old. I think there's a mixture of many reasons why I did not enjoy my first year at CalArts. Part of it is due to some of the things at the school, but a lot of it was also due to me. I don't think it's ever really one side's reason for why something didn't go well. Before I get too deep into this video though, I do want to provide some context as to who I was before I entered this school. And just like anyone else, I was really interested in animation ever since the age of five. And when I got to high school, I just kind of knew that animation was just what I wanted to do because when it came to art, I just had a particular liking towards cartoons, animation, the film industry, and television shows more so than like fine arts or graphic design, like that wasn't really my thing. But when it came to storytelling and animation, I knew that that was my shit. So that's why CalArts was my top school when it came to the different schools in America that offered animation as a program. And naturally with CalArts being one of the top ones listed, my immediate instinct was, hey, I should go to that school. But now that there are so many other alternatives to getting into the animation industry without going to art school for US residents at least, maybe I would have reconsidered my thoughts back then, but back then I did not have the resources that there are today. So CalArts was just the way to go for me back then. Other things that you should know is that before I moved to California, I lived in New York. And when I was living in New York, I moved to many different neighborhoods throughout my life as a kid. And I felt like this factor kind of made me a little bit scarred in the friendship world because I wasn't able to really maintain many of the friendships that I made just due to the fact that I was moving around and as a kid I feel like you don't have the greatest emotional intelligence to really keep your friends around or develop really deep and meaningful friendships at that age like sure we had fun together but nobody was really as committed as I was because after watching all of these animated shows, I felt like I just really wanted to have, you know, people that I could just call my people, just like they did in the cartoons and Disney movies. However, not everyone had the same idea as friendship as I did, and that is totally fine because you're just a kid. You're just figuring yourself out. And for me, I knew that I really wanted to have a solid group of friends. And by the time I graduated high school, I felt like I really found my friends. I found my people. These are the people that, you know, I'm going going to be calling my kids uncles and aunts and stuff. So when I moved to California, it was kind of a big scare for me to just really suddenly be like, okay, I'm dumping these people that I finally can call my friends. And I'm moving across the country to the West Coast while my friends are staying on the East Coast. So that was a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but things ultimately worked out the way that they did for the better. And I did lose some friends along the way, to be completely honest, just from moving to the other side of the country. And that can't be helped. But I am still thankful for the friends that I do have today, despite everything that we all went through. So finally getting into CalArts, when I first moved there, it was super exciting because finally you are in a place where all the things that were ever misunderstood about you back in your hometown were finally understood by others, including professionals and your teachers who are the people who created the things that you watched as a kid. Like I couldn't believe half of my teachers back then were people that have worked on the shows and films that I watched in theaters with my family and friends. And I'm just like, now I'm just casually sitting in 
a class taught by you. That is fucking crazy. So that was really exciting for me when I first entered the school and you just see hallways labeled after Glenn Keane or Hayao Miyazaki and it's just this world that was so foreign to other people back in my own hometown is now something that me and everybody at the school is familiar with. So it felt great to finally be understood in that department. However, I do feel like when you first enter an art school for the first time, especially when you're the only artist back in your hometown, it was kind of a bit of a culture shock to finally realize that, oh my god, I'm not the only artist anymore who draws good. There are so many people, so many art students around me now that do the same exact thing that I want to do and do it so much better than I do. And that was an insecurity that kind of came out of me that I didn't even know existed just because I feel like this is what happens to many people who enter a very specific industry type of school. And I felt like I couldn't really trust anyone either just because I wasn't sure if people wanted to become friends with me just so that, I don't know, they could use me and figure out my weaknesses so that they know how to triumph over me or something like that. Like these are kind of ridiculous when I say it now because now as someone working in the industry, looking at others, I would not want to view them that way and I would want to be more empathetic and open to where everybody came from. But back then as a high schooler who just came out of high school and you just felt like you were this special artist from your hometown and now you're not special anymore, it's kind of intimidating. And trust me, I know I'm not the only one who thought this, it's just not many artists like to talk about things like this, but I will tell you right now that a lot of artists face this insecurity whenever they enter an industry or a school where they see so many people who do exactly what it is they might want to do in the future. But I don't think that competition always has to be toxic. Like it's going to exist. Toxic types of competition will always exist somewhere out there in the world. It can't be helped. However, I do feel like the more that you just expose yourself to other people like you who are just as good as you in art and animation and whatever field it is you want to do, you just naturally become more understanding of where all of you came from and why you are at where you are in life. And it's fine if you're not the best artist. However, that's just something that's harder to see when you first enter an art school for the first time in your life as a young person. So I felt like that factor was a little bit overwhelming for me because I was afraid to show anybody my art. I was afraid to show anybody my sketchbook and it was ironic because that was something that a lot of the students did was they would just draw with each other and sit together and draw on their sketchbooks together. And that is something that honestly is great. I love that. However, for me, I just felt so fucking insecure with myself I was afraid of if I sat on a table and drew with other people, they'd be like, oh, can I see your sketchbook? Can I see what you're drawing? And then they would judge my style. They would judge what I'm drawing and just stuff like that. The truth is, I don't really know if people were going to be judging what it was that I was drawing just because that's how much I avoided showing anyone my art. It always gave me so much anxiety to just draw in front of the other students or draw in front of the teachers and have them think like, oh my gosh, this girl draws so shitty when this was the only thing that gave me so much confidence back in my hometown because this was the only thing that made me valuable back where I lived back at home. But now that I'm at this school where I feel like the skill level that gave me so much self-esteem is suddenly not that great. Like my self-esteem just went like into the depths of hell. So, so that on top of the fact that I had these friends back at home that I really wanted to stay committed to really prevented me from making friends within my class. And I didn't really make friends with anyone within my first year of CalArts. Like I am not joking when I say I had zero friends. Like yes, I had acquaintances and I had good positive connections with some people. However, I wouldn't say there was anyone that I would refer to as a friend. And I'm pretty sure that there were other students who felt the same way, but my version of it was just because First of all, I was afraid of losing my friends back in New York. So every day when class was over, I would just walk back to my little dorm room, lock myself in my room and just turn on Skype and talk to my friends. Like I wouldn't make an effort to really talk to my classmates because first of all, I was scared of them because I was just like, oh my God, they're all amazing artists and they'll think I'm shit. So they don't want to be friends with me anyway. And second of all, I had these friends that I was so fearful of losing that I felt like the only way to stay friends with them was if I went back to my dorm 
dorm and imprisoned myself in my room to just talk to them. And of course, looking back at this, it's all silly. But during that time in my life, to me, this was not silly, like this was life or death. On top of that, I did feel incredibly homesick because I missed my family who, honestly, I felt like when I left home from, I wasn't like in the best relationship with my parents. Like I had your typical teen drama, teen rebellion from your parents. But then when you move away, you realize how much you actually miss and love your family. So you grow this appreciation for them but it's like now that you appreciate them you're 3,000 miles away from them and you're just like shit and in addition to that my grandpa was actually kind of on the last leg of his life and he was not doing so well health wise so I felt really guilty for leaving my family and knowing that you know there was only a certain number of times left I might see my grandpa and he was the last grandparent I had standing and it was just a very emotional time for me to just be away from my family and friends when I know that oh my gosh there's like so much that I'm missing out on from my family's side that you know I just can't experience because I'm all the way here in California and it's not that reasonable for me to visit so frequently. So it's a very morbid thing to think about when you just think about you only have so many times left with a family member in your life, but it was the truth about how I felt when I was a freshman in college. So yeah, speaking of college, CalArts did not really feel that much like a college and it only took me visiting my friends who went to Boston University for me to realize how much of CalArts was not like your average American college. So just saying, if you want the true college experience in the United States, CalArts is not really going to give you the college experience. It gives you an art school experience, but it's not college or as some may say university like oh my god it is not a university at all in terms of the feeling of it so cal arts is a bit outdated when it comes to its whole building and infrastructure and its dorms i feel like a lot of schools out there in the world are like that but the thing is cal arts is very expensive I am honestly lucky and privileged to say that I had parents who were willing to support me financially throughout my whole time at school and I received some scholarships that allowed me to go to this school. I know that not everyone in this world can even say that or even dream about that, which is why I feel so fortunate to have had the experience and which is why I refuse to say that my time at CalArts was bad. I really feel like I did have a good time at CalArts at the end of the day. It's just, I'm talking about just the rocky parts in the beginning. The fact that this is a school that is very expensive to go to, it's kind of like ridiculous when you think about how much of this school has not been updated when you're pouring so much money into this school. You're just like, where the fuck is this money going? I personally, to this day, don't really know where all the tuition money goes to. My thoughts and a hypothesis is that you have a lot of amazing teachers and guest speakers who are purely from the industry that are giving you the connections and the exposure for you to graduate and hopefully get a job. And I feel like your chances of getting a job in the animation industry when you go to CalArts tend to be more likely just simply due to the fact that you are located in California where people from Disney can actually drive to your school and give you a guest lecture versus other other schools and other states where you have to fly people out there and that might be more difficult so I think that you are paying for more of like the accessibility to the connections and the exposure to the actual industry there and the fact that you had so many people that graduated from this school so that they are more familiar with this school to come back and like hopefully give some students some more knowledge and connections and whatever but at the same time it's just kind of ridiculous to think about how much money was coming out of you or your family or financial aid and it's only going to this old 70s style building that just hasn't seemed to be that updated and don't get me wrong I do see them make improvements throughout the time that I was there they updated the cafeteria within like the second or third year of my time at CalArts because when I first went there their cafeteria was just 
not updated at all. It was really old and their food choices were sometimes a little bit questionable. And in addition to that, their dorms are also pretty expensive for something that only gives you so much square footage and it's a very old building. But of course, like what college doesn't give you an old dorm building? Not many people can really afford to stay at the dorms, which only give you so much space and are not updated either. Like they're pretty old 70s styles dorms. But sometimes for some people, it made more sense to live off campus in their own apartment where, you know, you get more for what you pay for versus the dorms. The only thing about the dorms I would say was good was just the convenience of being able to get up and walk across the street to go to your class. But other than that, the dorms weren't really the best. But also from my personal experience living in the dorms at CalArts, I've had many like issues with my suite mates, not my roommates. I would say I was given a very good hand of roommates during my time at CalArts, but my first year at CalArts, I just had a very awkward situation with my suite mates where one of them would always keep inviting her boyfriend over to our dorm when he wasn't even a student at the school. It was just very uncomfortable to know that there was just this random man living in your suite who didn't even go to this school and would just shower in the same shower that you did and just, you know, was pretty much living in your personal space along with you that you just don't know about. And me and my roommates and my other suite mate like also felt uncomfortable by it. So we eventually talked to, I don't know, the residence hall or whatever, fuck, I don't know what it's even called anymore. And that person eventually did get removed from our suite, thankfully. Like, I feel bad because I really don't know that person and maybe they weren't really a threat at all to us. He probably wasn't. He probably was just there to see his girlfriend. However, it was just still an uncomfortable experience to just be living in a space where you thought you knew everyone only to find out that there was this man who was secretly coming into your suite from time to time and showering in your shower and whatever. So yeah, that was just my awkward first year experience living in the dorms of CalArts and I wish that maybe there was more regulation about that but at the same time I understand that housing might be difficult for a lot of people and this might be the only way that some people can live and you know there's always a way to just make an excuse for everything but I just honestly felt uncomfortable my first year for that reason. So going back to the whole art aspect of living in CalArts, one of the things that really intimidated me was the idea of creating our student film. And it's ironic because that was the reason why I was excited about going to this school. However, when I got there, it was just so scary to think about like how people will perceive me based on what I create. I feel like at the end of the day, the world is how you perceive it. And back then, my world as a young, immature girl perceived the world as, oh, you are your art. You are what you create. Therefore, people will associate what you create as you. So I felt like there was so much pressure to create this amazing short film as a first year student. Like I was like, if I don't make some Pixar level shit at the age of 18 during my first year of art school, I am complete shit and I have no hope for the future if I don't create something fucking amazing. And But you also had limitations to your first year film, which is basically making a pantomime animation, which means nobody can talk, nobody can speak, there's no dialogue, you can only have sound effects and maybe just sounds that the people make with their mouth, but they can't talk to explain anything. And it only had to be, I think like 90 seconds long and it had to be in black and white. So there were a lot of limitations to a first year film in which was intimidating because you're just like, oh, well, if you're limiting me, then of course I can't make the best thing I can ever make in my life. But that is of course due to a very limited mindset that I had back then. And I feel like a lot of students have this situation too, where they think that they should be making something super grand and epic when the school is really just asking for something that's 90 seconds long. Talk about how it feels to drink coffee in the morning in 90 seconds. Like that's the type of shit that they're asking for. Meanwhile, me, I was just like, I'm gonna make a film about a girl whose sister died in a car accident. And then the sister misses her sister. So her pet plushy sheep turns alive because she embodies the soul of her sister. And it's really the ghost of her sister that visits her. My issue, I think, was not knowing how to simplify things or not knowing how to make things concisely or learning to be okay with a simple idea. A part of me was not okay with making a simple idea because I felt like if I made something simple, it's just too easy, it's just too simple, and everyone's gonna just think lowly of it. So I felt a lot of pressure that I should make something 
something that was really emotional or something that was complex or something that just you know would make bitches cry in the theater <laughs> so that's of course where my first year film insomniba came from and it's kind of embarrassing for me to even ever look back on it or think about it but i keep it up just to show people where i came from back then and you know just the journey i feel like i can't talk about the journey without talking about the rough patch in the beginning every time we had our film workshop or story class i would just be the first person to show my short films work in progress because you would always have a show and tell session where you're like how's your film doing what's the progress on your film come up and show it to the class and everyone will help critique it to make it better and I was always the first one to go up in the class to show my work and to some people they might think oh my gosh this girl thinks she's so fucking amazing that she has to be the first to show her shit all the time but to me the real reason why i was like that was because i could not bear sitting in class throughout the three hours knowing that i have to show my stuff and sit in the anxiety of it like i felt so anxious just sitting in class every day knowing that eventually i have to get up and show and tell my stuff so to me my mindset was hey the sooner i get up and show it the less i have to worry about it for the remainder of class and by the end of the class everybody's gonna forget my work because you had so many other films to watch that mine will be the most forgettable so that's why i went up to show my work as the first student all the time and again i'm not saying i'm the only one who felt this way i'm pretty sure there were other students who experienced this form of anxiety with their work as well but just expressed it or hid it in different ways i had this fear of not being able to finish my stuff thanks to high school which was a super academic driven high school where it's like if you don't have all your homework done on time if you don't get like a 90 plus or above on all your assignments all the time you are garbage so for me i kind of carry that along into my cal arts experience where i was just like oh my god if i don't finish my student film on time i'm utter trash or if i don't do this well i'm utter trash like i just always associated my worth with my skill level and i just think that that's such a shitty and limited way to view life and i'm sorry for my younger self for going through that but it took me going through that to get to where i am today that's not to say that the person i am today is perfect it's just i'm better than what i was before in certain aspects i didn't even go to the labs during this time in my life because i would only work on my film in my dorm room for the same exact reason because i was afraid of fomo with my friends back on the east coast and in general i was also afraid of sitting in the labs and drawing in front of everybody where they can just come over and look at what it is i'm doing and then judge me for it it's just funny because whenever i hear people talk about me as a student back then i remembered i always received the comments of like oh my gosh how are you so fast at completing your student films oh my gosh how do you always get done so early like how do you do it to me like it all came from anxiety of me fearing not finishing fearing not being good enough and just fear in general meanwhile everyone thinks that i'm just a really super fast hardworking person in which i was in high school and college but a lot of my hard work kind of rooted from fear which sounds pretty bad but honestly that's just where it came from i spent the last week of school just literally chilling by the poolside and drawing in my sketchbook just because i was like I feel like I need to really reevaluate my life and why I am like this. And I really wanted myself to change. I knew that there was something wrong with me and not to say that there's something wrong with you when you deal with fear and anxiety. I just felt like this was a thing that I did not like about myself. And I knew I did not like this about myself. So I had to think about how to change this about myself for my second year and the many other years I had to come left at this school. Like I could not be this way for the remainder of my time at CalArts. During my last week at school, I actually made the effort to start talking to people and try being friends with people. And during the producer's show week at school, that was actually when I met my friend Noor, who is now one of my best friends. And the way that we met each other was we just decided to just group up as the same group who would travel to the producer's show. And we just stood in a bathroom line together and started talking. And I was like, wow, Michelle, look at the things that you could do if you just decide to say hi to someone and just 
you know, keep the conversation going. So Noor was really one of the first friends that I would say I made at CalArts. But in addition to that, during my last week, I finally decided to go into the labs and start animating and drawing, even if it meant other people had to see me draw. So this wasn't even for my student film because student films were over by this time. I was just literally animating really random shit just so that I could get used to the idea of sitting in a space drawing in front of other people. Unfortunately, I saved this all for literally the last week of school and it was just then that I realized like, oh my gosh, I really wasted my first whole year at CalArts just pitying myself and just clinging on to my past life back in New York, in which I don't think is bad to just stay committed to your relationships back at home. However, I was kind of using it as an excuse as to why I shouldn't make friends or why I shouldn't have a life here. So finally, I told myself enough is enough. I don't want to live the rest of my life at school like this. And I'm going to just start making changes in myself for the better. And there were some things that still happened that, you know, made the school year a little bit rocky and sad for me and that was that my grandpa actually eventually passed away during the end of my first year at CalArts which made going back to my second year at CalArts very difficult like I felt like I went to my mentor at CalArts so many times just to cry and just drown myself in work throughout my second year which will be in another video next time even though things like my grandpa passing away or the fact that my second year became a whole year of workaholism there were things that I definitely learned and helped motivate me to want to have a good life by the end of my entire time at school. This was kind of a turning point in my life. So in a way, it's kind of good that it started off bad, but obviously in a perfect world, you just kind of wish that you never have to deal with anything bad. And I hope that maybe my story helps give you a more realistic viewpoint of what it might be like when you enter school. So just remember that just because I'm talking about my experience doesn't mean that your experience will be like this. It's providing my perspective as just a story that you can listen to and think about when you're living out your own life. So yeah. Anyway, if you are interested more about attending art school in general, I'll link videos about that more below. This is just kind of more about my experience, not a video about informing you about art school facts or anything like that. But if you do like this video and if you want to see a part two to this, please make sure to like or comment this video if you would like for me to do so. So thank you for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay ho, some bitches.